Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today I am in P5JS. I've got two toys to show you, which you can play with in your browser. You don't need to know anything about coding. The first is this thing, which is a Perlin noise flow field. And by changing a few variables, you can get a different result, which I will show you how to change those variables. The second toy is this Ripple machine. This was created by Daniel Schiffman on the coding train. This is a variation of that Ripple machine, which I will also be showing you. This is Dan Schiffman. I'll be leaving a link to his YouTube channel and his website where you can view his videos on the Pearl and Noise flow field and the Ripple machine and download his original code. This is Dan's original program, which I modified by adding color. I added extra variables at the top so you can easily change things. I added a click on the canvas to pause and S to save a JPEG of the canvas. So I've changed things back to the defaults. Let's look at the variables that can be changed. So color increment, the color change speed. If I increase this to say 10, you'll see the color is changing more rapidly going through the entire hue spectrum. We'll put that back to 0.5. Now we'll mess with the saturation. Let's put that down to 70. And you'll see that there's a lot less color coming through. It's more muted. We'll put that back and change the brightness. So here you have full saturation, but it's less bright. So you wind up getting more earth tones. Now we'll put that back. And this is the alpha. Right now it's at 10. We'll change it to say 50. And you'll see that the strokes are still tiny, but it's more bold because uh, there's less transparency. We'll put the alpha back to 10, and then the number of particles, it starts with 300 individual lines moving around the canvas. We'll change that to say only 30, and it's a bit hard to see with only 30. Let's also change the line width here from 2 to say 5, and now you can see that there's thicker lines but fewer of them. And if we put the particles back to 300 but keep the stroke at 5, You'll see this. This is still with an alpha of 10. We'll put that back to one, and now the angle multiplier, if I decrease this to say 0.5, we're gonna get straight lines. So this is very nice. Let's change that to say two. And here we've got more wavy lines, but still somewhat straight. And you get kind of a wood grain pattern, which is very nice. After you change the angle multiplier, if you're trying to do more or less straight lines, you can also change the angle turn, which is adjusting the angle for straight lines after you adjust the angle multiplier. So if I change this to say two, looks like we've got lines going to the left. I can change this to say three. Okay, they're going up this way. Let's go to four. And now they're going pretty much straight up. I can change it a little bit further. Let's do 3.8 maybe. And now they're going almost straight up. Put that back. And then instead of going 25, let's go even higher to say 50 for the angle multiplier. And let me also make the alpha a little higher. And you'll see that the turns are more sharp. So a low angle multiplier results in straight lines, a high angle multiplier results in a lot more curves. And as I said, you can click on the canvas to pause it, and if you like what you see, hit S to save a JPEG. And the last variable to adjust, I just put the angle multiplier back to 25. I've still got the alpha at 30 instead of 10. Uh, the Z off ink, is the speed of the vector changes. I'm not sure if this is going to do much to tell you the truth. Let's just change this to 0 0.03 instead of 0 0.0003. So the effect of this is interesting, but it's hard to explain without talking about Perlin noise. And even if I do talk about Perlin noise, I'm not sure I can completely explain how this happens. You can see that there are some blank spots here and here. Uh, if I click on start again, it's going to get a whole new Pearl and Noise field. And so you won't get blanks in the same spot. So let's let that fill in a little bit and we'll see what the pattern is for this Pearl and Noise field. 
So I've let this run for a while and you can see that this area is continually getting lots of color and then these areas around here are not getting hardly any color. So those are all the variables you can change. There'll be a link to this code in the description. I encourage you to go click there and play with the variables and see what you get. Before I talk about the Perl and Noise stuff, uh, let's switch over to the Ripple machine. I'll show you some stuff about that and then we'll talk about Perl and Noise towards the end of the video. This is Dan Schiffman's Water Ripples. I'm clicking and dragging the mouse to make the ripples. And here's his code where I added a couple of rectangles to see if I could get the ripples to bounce off the rectangles back and forth. I also changed the background to white because I think you can see the waves continuing on a little bit better. The way I added the rectangles I won't go into too much but I know it's not an ideal coding way that I added these rectangles but it was the best I could do. There'll be a link to this code in the video description and in my second adjustment to the water ripples code I added some randomness to the wave patterns here and here, which creates a kind of convection. I'll start this off and then skip ahead a little bit. And here we are ahead a little bit and you can see that it's sort of boiling, like it's the surface of the sun or something. It's not completely random, you just see fuzz if it was completely random, but, but because of the wave algorithm and the randomness together, it creates sort of a Perl and noise effect. If I increase the randomness max from 1.2 to 1.3, you'll see that it completely takes over the entire canvas. And if I put that to say 1.0, you'll see that the ripples don't last very long. So having this randomness between 0.8 and 1.2 seems to do the trick for having a nice convection result. I want to get into this next, but in order to do this, I feel I really need to talk about Perl and Noise. Before I do that, if you've liked this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, comments are always welcome. So let's talk about Perl and Noise for a bit. Perl and Noise is a kind of randomness, but it's a more smooth randomness. I'm gonna start by drawing a ball across the screen moving randomly. So here's a ball moving around completely random. You can see it kind of stays in the same area. I can increase the uh, number of pixels it's moving. We'll increase it from one to five. So it's moving around more, but it's still very jittery. But let's get rid of this code, we'll comment that out, and we'll bring in this code which is the noise code Perlin noise and this was written by Daniel Schiffman also and you can see that the ball is moving around randomly but it's a more smooth randomness this is Dan Schiffman's noisy sine wave and you can see that it is a sine wave but it's got movement in it and that movement is using noise and here is another noisy sine wave of Dan Schiffman's, but this one has basically sine waves layered on top of sine waves to get even more randomness. And this is basically what Perl and Noise does. It adds smooth randomness. And in this example of Daniel Schiffman's, you can use Perl and Noise to populate the canvas with pixels, but in a Perl and Noise sort of randomness. So if this was completely random pixels, you would just see fuzz, but because it's Perl and Noise, you see some patches of dark and some patches of white that blend together. I can click on Refresh, and you'll see a completely different field of Perl and Noise. I'll click on Refresh again, and you can see another field of Perl and Noise. So if we go back to the Perl and Noise flow field example, you can see that this is using Perl and Noise to create randomness, but a smooth randomness. So back to the water ripples convection example, I'm going to add back in Perl and Noise. We're gonna multiply by the Perl and Noise number, and I'm gonna take out the random number, so all we get is Perl and Noise multiplication. So now I'll do my ripples, and unfortunately adding in Perl and Noise does make it more slow. And something very strange and unexpected happens with this. It creates these cross hatchings. 
and these cross hatches grow over time. I don't honestly know why this happens, but I think it's fascinating. And this is a little bit similar to Conway's Game of Life. Uh, the way the water ripples work and Conway's Game of Life works is you have a certain state of pixels and then you have an algorithm that converts that state into a new state of pixels. Let me restart this. It's getting a little hard to look at. What's interesting is when we restart this, we get crosshatches again, but they're in a different place because we have a different set of Perl and noise. Let me stop this. We'll go back to the code. We'll add the random number back in. So we have both the random number and the Perl and noise random number. And to get the interesting effect I want to show you, I'm going to switch this to 1.3. We'll run that, add some ripples. I'll advance this a little bit. And here's what you get with the water ripples code, adding in randomness and Perl and noise randomness. I have no idea why it's doing this, but it looks really cool. You can see it has these white convection areas and also some dark convection areas. And if I run this again, we're going to get a different set of convection areas. So let's add some ripples. And it's moving very slow because of the Perlin noise. And here we have a different set of convection areas. Uh, again, I don't know why it does this, but pretty cool. Links to this are in the description. Uh, again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.